Well, we're outside the GSM conference in Barcelona at the moment, and those feet belong to Linda Brown on Motorola. What actually are you doing, apart from uh, just working out? Yeah, this whole solution is something called Moto Bike. Um, we announced this in January of this year, and it's all about providing the option for people where they have no electricity or regular access to electricity to be able to charge their mobile phones. So we're using um, you know, a dynamo on the back wheel of the bike, and basically this is providing charge, and I've got here the Moto phone, the emerging access uh, handset, and also a sliver, and we're just charging these with pedal power. How long does it take to charge them up? From in terms of a completely flat phone, you know, completely dead battery, we would be looking at a couple of hours um, charge. So it's actually quite similar to putting it into an electrical socket, similar charging time. I gotcha. Um, but we've actually had some um, individuals who had flat batteries while they've been here. They've come on for about 15 minutes and just been able to give themselves some initial charge, perhaps you know, one or two bars, just to get themselves going again. Gotcha. Now, I'm interested in that phone on the left. Yep. Uh, I haven't seen one of those before, but where, where are they sold? These are, this is Moto Phone. This was announced last October. Um, basically, it's launched in India. It's um, the low-cost handset, uh, latest sort of low-cost handset design from Motorola, but incorporating some of the iconic design that you'll see of the one on the right, the sliver, you know, thin, stylish. Um, we've actually just uh, won the GSMA Ultra Low Cost Handset Award with that at this show. Um, and really the key features of that is it's got a um, unique screen design. It's a kind of a basic phone, GSM voice and text. It has a, a screen that's designed for very high sunlight situations. Um, and it's also got very good battery life. And again, that was an important aspect. You know, people have not got access to charging on a daily basis. This phone offers over 500 hours standby time. And it also offers 400 minutes talk time without recharge. But supposing I can't read? Uh, actually, it's, it's got um, some basic, the menu function um, just works very simply. You just flick through, it's got, you know, just sort of send a text, read a text, um, make a call, and it actually speaks those things to you. What sort of price is that? Uh... Um, it uh, retails for around $40. That was obviously one of the key things. We're looking to bring that style, um, sort of shape and design but also keep the price at a, you know, a good target. And one of the ways of keeping it down is just having a black and white screen? Uh, no, the actual reason for the black and white screen um, was, more to do, was more actually to do with the contrast and the high sunlight. Um, there's a couple of um, other ranges. In terms of the emerging market focus, this is another very interesting project that Motorola has done with a company called Shared Phone in South Africa. We have a joint brand, Moto Booth. Um, and basically, it's all about turning your GSM paper, your GSM handset into a into a payphone, and it's giving the opportunity for local kind of traders. They might be um, running a sort of fruit and vegetable stand. They might have a small shop, and they can actually basically turn that into a business where they can hire out their phone to other people. They can kind of set a um, tariff that gives them some differential between the standard tariff of the operator, um, and you know they can actually charge additional amount and make some profit and run it as a small business. And they presumably can fix that phone to something because uh, otherwise the danger is that you'd, you'd sort of get Absolutely. the phone, in, phone and out and wouldn't come back. So this is a G obviously a GSM handset but it's in a fixed design format and that's exactly it. It's there to, and also it's actually a user thing. They somehow feel like it's more of a real phone if they have the kind of more, um, the more solid looking fixed handset. But it is also I think partly a security thing. So we've talked a little bit about um, how you get power to subscribers and how to make it economical for subscribers in terms of power usage of phones when we talked about the Moto phone. Now we can actually have a look at some of the solutions to do with getting power to the networks, which is also an equal problem when you're rolling out in some emerging markets. How's it done at the moment? Is it diesel generators? Uh, yes, it's often diesel generators or um, I mean, they may be main grid supply, but often that can take a lot of time to connect um, and can be very expensive. Um, so operators are looking at other areas and other ways that they can get connected with their networks. Yeah, let's have a look at these uh, solar panels. So one of the things that Motorola is doing that's a little bit different is we're actually looking at hybrid solutions. So there's going to be some places where you can actually have a solar and a wind turbine um, footprint. 
And that allows the opportunity to actually have a, have a smaller footprint. If you're actually doing it with a combination of a wind turbine and solar panels, you don't need to have the huge footprint that you might have to use for, um, you know, if it's just solar panels alone. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we've looked at this technology. Um, also, you know, you often have a mixture of weather in, you know, many climates. So even in Africa, you have dull days that are windy and sunny days that are still. So we found that the hybrid solution meant there was a more consistent power supply. So one of the things that we've done, we've done the pilot in the UK, where we've used the hybrid solution of wind and solar, and we're now taking that out to a live commercial network in Namibia. We're going to do a trial site, first half of 2007, where we're using the combined wind and solar solution.